This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedejo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. Today we're talking about After Effects and how it can eat up a lot of hard drive space on your machine. So this isn't usually an issue for the more traditional environment where you're using like a PC or a tower setup where you can just plug in another NVMe drive or an SSD drive. This is more of an issue when you're using something like a laptop. For example, right here, I'm using the new 14 inch MacBook Pro um, and it's only a few months old. And as you can see here in this application, this is Daisy Disk, by the way, this is a paid application, not sponsored, but I've been using it for many years now to kind of show me where all the large files and directories are. Um, there are other free alternatives on Mac OS and Windows. I'll, I'll link some down in the video description below. Um, basically the caches folder on this pretty much brand new MacBook Pro, it's already 177 gigabytes. And that is mostly from Adobe applications right here. So if you hop in there, 171 gigabytes, of cash solely from After Effects. And this is a pretty brand new machine. So if you only had like a terabyte of hard drive space, this can actually add up quite a bit here. And so in After Effects, you can actually go ahead and delete that very quickly. You can either go to the actual directory itself and just delete it that way. Or you can go to your After Effects version right here and go to, you need to go to edit and go to purge and go ahead and just kind of wipe out the memory and disk cache. That way, this is a very quick and easy way to do it. And that is the end of the video. Uh, but in more detail here, if you can go into the After Effects preferences and go down into the media and disk cache, you're able to kind of really see what's going on here. So by default, the disk cache is turned on and I believe it's set to about roughly 10% of your total hard drive space. So I have a terabyte of storage right here and so my disk cache is roughly 92 gigabytes and this is by default, I didn't change any of this right now. And it kind of shows you where the caches are, so in my library slash caches folder. Um, and if you open up multiple versions of After Effects, it kind of shows the same thing, but don't think that emptying the disk cache this way will actually delete all the caches from all the versions of After Effects because if you go into the actual directory right here, and this is the Adobe directory within the cache folder that's shown in After Effects. If you go into the After Effects directory right here, you can see that each version of After Effects that I have installed has their own little cache version right here. So this whole disk cache right here. So actually clicking the empty disk cache for After Effects 2022 is only gonna delete the disk cache for this particular version. So if you wanna delete everything, you can either go to the directory itself and delete everything that way manually, or you can go to each individual After Effects and go ahead and empty your disk cache that way. But as you can see, 92 gigabytes adding up very, very quickly in your disk cache can take up a lot of space. And so you can always go in here and adjust the maximum disk cache size to something smaller if you want it to be. But just a little recap on how caches work with an After Effects, I'll link to this article down below by Adobe themselves that kind of explains everything here. But basically, After Effects uses caches to kind of help speed up your workflow, speed up your performance and playback and previews. A lot of it is stored into the RAM cache as well as the disk cache. And of course, on a media level or a footage level, the media cache. So when you're on the timeline or the footage panel or whatever, and you see this kind of like green line indicator right here, this is kind of telling you that this is kind of stored in your RAM cache if it's green. And if you kind of see like blue lines, it kind of indicates that those frames are actually stored on the disk as disk cache. It's also important to note that the RAM cache itself is actually automatically purged whenever you put After Effects. So that will kind of get erased right here as indicated right here. Now, when it comes to the disk cache itself, it doesn't actually purge whenever you quit After Effects. And that makes sense because whenever you open up the project again, you want it to kind of read the disk cache and reuse that information um, in case you need it again. So the disk cache itself does not get erased and purged whenever you close After Effects, which is why you kind of need to manually purge it whenever it makes sense for you, whether it's after the project's over, after the delivery date, so on and so forth. And right here, it says that purging the disk cache of one version of After Effects does not purge the cache of other versions, for example. Here towards the bottom, Adobe recommends that whenever you pick a disk cache location, it's best to kind of select a different physical hard disk other than your source footage, so a separate SSD or a separate disk. And it's best if that disk uses a different drive controller than the disk that contains your source footage so there's no conflict or bottleneck going on over there. They recommend a fast hard drive or an SSD with as much space allocated as possible for the disk cache folder, and they just can't be the root directory of the hard disk. It's also important to note that just like the RAM cache, After Effects only uses the disk cache to store fr a frame. If it's faster to retrieve that frame from the cache than to re-render the frame altogether. So it's probably not gonna do that for like basic text layers or solid layers. It's gonna save that cache for more intensive operations with tons of effects and so on and so forth. Now the media cache is something a little bit different. Whenever you import stuff like video and audio in some formats, After Effects actually processes and caches those versions of the media file so that these items can be readily accessed when generating previews so that items are not reprocessed for each preview. It just makes it a little bit faster and that's the media cache right there. You can read more about it there. 
And then one little side note about RAM previews and RAM cache and all that stuff is that um, it's not really so much how long your composition is or how many layers your composition has in order to kind of fit into the RAM preview or to the RAM cache. It's really more about how memory intensive each frame is. So if you have a lot of effects stacked on there and you have you know, 32 bits per channel, tons and tons of high resolution footage, a whole bunch of effects, a whole bunch of mass, a lot of shadows and depth of field effects, when using 3D layers, for example, these things can kind of increase the demand of the memory per frame. And that will kind of limit what you can do and what you can preview through RAM, which is why it's always best to kind of max as much RAM as you can, as you possibly can afford on your machine. So that's basically just kind of like a PSA for you guys out there. If you guys are finding yourself running out of disk space, um, check the cache filter within After Effects. Use an application similar to Daisy Disk to kind of track which version of After Effects is using a lot of cache storage and kind of clear it up that way. It's a very nice little way to kind of clean things up if you don't need it anymore. So just a friendly little reminder there. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website with this for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys. Let me know in the comments down below how big your disk cache directory is from Adobe After Effects. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.